Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Politics and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. First and foremost, I want to start this episode off with a wonderful, happy birthday to Mr. Ralph Lauren. Uh, he's the inspiration for everything we have here. He's the inspiration for the vlog. He's the king. Salute you, brother. Happy birthday. Now, because it is Mr. Lauren's birthday, I want to do this particular episode. I want this particular episode to be on one of the more popular and uh, well-manufactured items by the brand Ralph Lauren. Um, this particular item the company makes, I'm gonna say anywhere from 40 to maybe 60 different varieties of this item every year. So do the math, the company's been in business 51 years, you figure maybe, maybe they've been carrying this particular item for maybe 45 of those years. So do the math, 45 times 50 or 60. And yet there are some versions of this particular item that are very sought after, very rare, very hard to find. That just lets you know how popular this item is. And the item that I'm talking about is the crew neck sweatshirt. Now, some of the, from a price point standpoint, some of the Ralph Lauren crew necks, which would, you know, chaps, American living, uh, maybe some of the denim and supply, um, maybe maybe Lauren Ralph Lauren. They're not always the upper echelon of the crew neck sweatshirt. But blue label, purple label, double RL, rugby of course. Anytime you find a crew neck sweatshirt under one of those genres of the brand, guarantee you it's gonna be of the most vintage and top quality that you will find. Now, what makes a crew neck sweatshirt ideal? One, because it's very versatile. Now, I will say this. To me, and this is my personal preference and my just my personal theory. You should not wear a crew neck sweatshirt with a suit. If you want to, want to wear some type of layering piece other than a shirt with a suit, I would suggest going with a sweater. The crew neck can be dressed down and it definitely can be dressed up to certain levels, but I don't know about a suit. Maybe the only suit I would even maybe attempt to wear a sweatshirt with would be a heavy wool tweed type herringbone sweat uh, suit. Maybe I would attempt it, but for the most part, I steer clear of crew neck sweatshirts with suits. However, Sports coats, blazers, definitely great layering pieces. You can go as far as I have went, which is the white uh, white and navy academy crew, uh, crew neck sweatshirt. It has the V insert for sturdiness and long lasting collar. It's a it's a heavy fleece, a, a nice heavy fleece, perfect for early fall. When you start talking about white, you may want to steer clear of it after Labor Day. But me personally. I will rock some white in the fall. I'll even maybe rock this in the winter, just winter, just depending on my location. But crew neck sweatshirt, button, button down collared Oxford plaid with burgundy and several other colors in it, including navy and white. Went with a heraldic bow tie in the burgundy and white, uh, burgundy and navy stripe. Navy camel hair, uh, two two button blazer, two button sports coat. Nice pair of uh, slim fit denim, and a pair of brown chuckers on my feet. Oh, and blue and white striped tan. 
So blue and white is the theme of this particular ensemble. I did add a little color here with the pocket square and a maroon to bring out the maroon in the bow tie. And I threw on the pink pink pony for one of the most influential charities in the world, Pink Pony. And this is October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Save the Tatas. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to style a crew neck sweatshirt. This is, uh, the crew neck is one of my favorite pieces. I have quite a few. Um, always on the lookout for more. There's a few pieces that have been managing to uh, get away from me you know, a couple of vintage pieces but you know i'm patient it'll come to me but the crew neck is just so versatile it's one of the it's one of my favorite pieces um i feel like i can still be me if i need to run to the grocery store or run to to get a bottle of wine or something like that if i'm just running out running to the post office i can throw on a, i can still be me in a crew neck and still feel like i'm representing the brand and the lifestyle I'll show you what I'm talking about in a few minutes uh, as we uh, show these styles on this rig, okay? Let's go, man. Y'all ready? So our first piece is a very much sought after piece. I was really lucky to grab this uh, several years ago. I've had this about four or five years now, but it's the Indian Springs crew neck sweatshirt. Um, it's a medium weight fleece. It's got the V-neck insert to keep your collar in shape and sturdy. But it's got this beautiful vintage stitching here and along here. Um, it definitely has that, it definitely has that rural look. It definitely has that collegiate look, man. This is a beautiful crew neck sweatshirt. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to dress it up as much as I could without going too overboard again like i was speaking in the introduction as far as like with suiting but i did want to dress it up so i wanted a little flashier of a sports coat or blazer as opposed to this navy solid navy blue i wanted something a little flashy so i grabbed one of my chaps pieces um the few pieces of chaps that i do have uh they're pieces that i like a lot that's why i have them i'm not Chaps is not my favorite genre of the Ralph Lauren brand, but occasionally I find things that I just truly love and I have to grab it. And this uh, this particular sports coat, sports coat is one of them. It has a mustard yellow, some smoke gray here, and it actually has a little bit of green also heathered into the, to the, to the gray. So um, it definitely complements this sweatshirt very well. We then went on with a chambray button-down collared shirt, foul yard yellow and maroon tie, a pair of slim fit cargo pants in, uh, in the khaki, in the boating khaki, and a pocket square in navy in yellow, navy in yellow with a yellow floral print on it. Kind of to complement the uh, necktie. Uh, I would end the look off with a pair of tassel loafers. I have. Uh, a brown leather pair that will work great, a dark brown leather pair, and I have a snuff pair uh, in suede snuff color that would also work great. But uh, yeah, this is a this is a really nice ensemble. This is something I would definitely wear. Will probably be wearing soon because that 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 temperature is dropping. But this is something that you you know you could wear out for outing on a Saturday, you know brunch maybe something like that. You going shopping whatever. This is, this is a great ensemble. And if it does get a little warm wherever you are, you take it off and you're still, you're still looking very classy, looking very stylish, looking quite ivy. All right, let's go on to the second ensemble. For the second piece, this is a beautiful rugby royal polo athletic club with that collegiate style uh, insignia in the center. It is uh, embroidered it's got some screen printing here just like some varsity numbers they're very tonal very hard to see unless you're up on the actual uh, item v-neck insert again it's just a really nice piece really it's really simple but 
styled properly, man. This is a this is a nice conversation piece. I mean, I I would absolutely wear several different styles of tweed blazers with this particular piece here. Um, but what I did was I just paired it with the Columbia Blue Oxford and a pair of boating khaki boating khaki uh, chinos. Simple. Now you could do sneakers, if you did do sneakers, I would keep it simple, a type of canvas sneaker or something like that, but me personally, I probably whip out a pair of boats, either brown leather or a snuff suede boat, boat shoe. Um, Hat-wise, you could put on, you could put on any estate driving cap would do the trick, man, but this is, you know, something middle of the road, definitely not dressed up like the uh, previous ensemble, definitely not too dressed down like the ensemble that's next. So. This is me dressing the sweatshirt down. Now it's not a crew neck sweatshirt, but it's fleece. It's, it's got the, the characteristics of a sweatshirt, which is the ribbed sleeves and ribbed at the waist. The only difference is it's not a crew neck, it's a quarter zip, all right? But it's still a sweatshirt. Doesn't have a V-neck insert, obviously, because again, it's not a crew neck, but it has that same, like again, another characteristic, the stitching on the sleeves and on the shoulders, all right? Uh, this is a Cricket from the RL Cricket Club. This is a Cricket sweatshirt. It's got stripes here inside internally and on the barrel of the uh, sleeve. And it's got a, uh, the same uh, navy and yellow stripe on the ribbed waist. It's got a number three here, nothing on the back. Really nice piece. Some a little different from the crew neck, but it's still a sweatshirt as I stated. And what I did here, this is me running errands, 55, maybe 60 degrees outside. I threw on the 1967 uh, uh, patchwork knit polo. Threw that on here, so that gives us some uh, some more pops of color. We have some we have some college green, and we have uh, wine here as well as yellow and navy to complement the stripes here. And then I put on a pair of uh, the USA Polo sweat uh, sweatpants, fleece sweatpants. Um, 67 here, embroidered and screen printed, jogger, jogger at the bottom. Here I can throw on a pair of, I have a pair of uh, navy and yellow sneakers if I wanna get a little matchy matchy. I could throw those on. I have a pair of white uh, leather and canvas, white blue canvas uh, sneakers, I could throw those on. I could also throw on a, a pair of boat shoes if I wanted to, um, you know, just pull it all the way around to, more, to a more of an ivy look. I could do that as well. Um, you could also switch this out for a collared shirt if you want to, and then you can even go so far as to wear a bow tie or a necktie. I've done it before and it's got rave reviews. So um, you can actually, this particular look, you can actually step it up and dress it up a little bit even though you're wearing sweats and maybe sneakers by changing the shirt to a button down collar shirt and uh, a bow tie or a necktie. Um, hat wise, you can still throw on a state driving cap here, but you could also throw on a cap. You know, if you have a cricket cap, which I have a, a couple that will work with this. If you wanted to keep it even more simple than that, if maybe you have a navy, uh, Polo, uh, polo player dad cap, you could throw that on. Throw it on backwards, man, and, and, and do your thing. But uh, this is something I would definitely wear, have worn before. And like I said, this is this is dressing down a crew neck silk shirt. Now you can go even further, but if you're gonna go any further dressed down than that, you might well not even come out of the house unless you're gonna play ball. And then why you playing, why you playing basketball in, in your best polo out worn uh, sweatshirt? That just don't make any sense find a tour of Nike or Champion hoodie or something to fall in. But anyway, that's what we got today. No drink today. Um, I really just want to talk to y'all real quick. Um, it's, get, it's coming crunch time. It's coming to crunch time, man. Uh, primaries are November 3rd. You can vote early if you want to. Um, but definitely make sure you vote. I haven't always voted. Only, only time I voted was both times for Obama. Um, I haven't always been that person that thought my, that, that thought voting counted or mattered. And it was kind of proven with the fiascos in Florida the last two times somebody ran. So, um, 
But we have a terrorist in office, man. And if the only way we can get him out is that everybody who voted for Hillary last time and half the people that voted for Trump last time are voting for Biden this time, then we can get him up out of there. The sad part about it to me is that it's the lesser of two evils. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Biden. I would have preferred to see Bernie Sanders running um, out of the choices we had. But uh, I'm not a big fan of Biden. Um, I like Com uh, Kamala Harris, but I do have quite a few friends and acquaintances from acquaintances from California that don't have anything good to say about it. And my mom, who is one of the few people on this earth that I trust 100%, she said, and I quote, Harris definitely wouldn't have been my first choice. So again, we have to vote because that's the only way we're going to get this the Antichrist out of office. And, you know, we're voting for the lesser of two evils, but I think we'll be better off as a, as a country, as a community, if we uh, vote Donald Jack off Trump out of office and, you know, at least, at least see what Biden and Harris can do for the next four years. Now, the other thing about voting where it really counts is your local city and state. Those are the people that make some of these crazy ass laws that are in effect. So again, you have time, you have, you know, about two or three weeks, maybe something like that, um, to do some research, figure out who on your local level, who as far as mayor, who as far as senator, who as far as governor, has you and your community's best interests at heart. Um, I give an example, I'm in North Carolina, and Tom, Till Tom Tillis and Cal Cunningham are said to be neck and neck. Well, the only negative thing that I've seen about Cal Cunningham, just from doing my own research, not commercials, not smear campaigns, but me doing my own research, is that he may or may not have attempted to have an extramarital affair against his wife. Tom Tillis, on the other hand, nah, fam, I ain't, I ain't rocking with that dude at all. Now, if you're in North Carolina, I'm not going to tell you what, what's making me say that? You have to do your own research. But Tom Tillis ain't it. Not for me. So, again, there's a whole bunch of levels to this, to this government and to this voting, but we have to do it. So, pay more attention to your local levels, your city, and your state. Senate, House of Representatives, governors, councilmen, councilwomen, uh, sheriffs, Pay attention to all that stuff. That's that's what's more important to your immediate future than them two clowns running for a presidential office. All right? Unfortunately, Barack ain't walking back through that door. So we're going to have to do what we got to do. Lesser two evils. Biden and Harris. Anyway, that's another episode in the books. We did crew necks, predominantly crew necks. We did sweatshirts. We did sweatshirts uh, because... It's one of the, the most popular and most highly manufactured and sturdiest items in the Ralph Lauren brand. And because Mr. Ralph Lauren is one of the most sturdiest OGs we know, and it's his birthday today, I want to do, to do something uh, reflective of him. So get in the comment section. And uh, I got a lot of sweatshirts, and I know, a, I know a lot about the sweatshirts. So get in the comment section and tell me, What's one of your favorite sweatshirts, maybe from the past or maybe one that just dropped last week? Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and tell a friend, because we here. Artists paint pictures, haters paint narratives. So don't be no hater. I say don't be no hater. <laughs> Have a go.